Come on and put those hands together tonight and bless the Lord in this place. He's worthy of all the glory, honor, and the praise.
moment and just thank him and give him praise and give him glory give him honor we just celebrated him dying on a cross last week getting up out of a cold grave that Sunday morning let's give God praise I don't know about you but it gives me a new breath of life it just makes me want to do it again and again do it again and again it's just like things are fresh now I don't know but I want to praise God myself for just a minute I want to tell him thank you Amen. It didn't run over me on I-10 today. I just want to tell him thank you. I had enough to eat today. I want to tell him thank you. I got somewhere to stay today. I just want to tell God thank you. Hallelujah. He supplied all of my needs. I want to tell him thank you. I'm feeling pretty good tonight. He's enabling me to stand tonight. I just want to tell him thank you tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you for getting up, God. Thank you for being in Christ. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus Christ is God. You know that, don't you? That's who got up last Sunday morning. It was God getting up. Amen. I thank God tonight for being in the house. Thank God for you being here tonight. God giving us another opportunity to come and show our love for him. Even in times like these, somebody know what I'm talking about. In times like these, God is just good. I'm so glad you're here tonight. I thank God for you being here tonight. Amen. I thank God for our e-members. Let's give them a hand praise tonight. Somebody's out there in YouTube and Facebook. And they had church tonight. They had an opportunity to get to church. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm telling everybody I meet, just, just go to YouTube, JRA Ministries. Amen. And come to church with us. I mean, that's what's up now. That's what, it, that's what it's all about today. That's the way we're doing it. Amen. And I thank God for you members all over the nation, all over the world. We thank God for our pastor. He's probably with you all in Oklahoma tonight. I, I think that's what he told me he was. Uh, it don't matter. I never want to know. But I know he's out there doing what Jesus did, getting the word out. And I thank God tonight for our pastor. I thank him for allowing me to stand uh, Sister Dovey, what I really thank God for is that I'm able to help my pastor to be here to stand, to, to do what we need to do to, to speak a word tonight, because we've come together. Uh, we, we're keeping the commandments, Lord. As we, the Bible told us not to forsake the gathering of ourselves together, so we're striving to do what God told us to do here in the house tonight. And Amen. And God is going to bless us. Amen. And I'm just glad that you're here tonight. Do we have any first-time guests in the house tonight by a show of hands? First time, you're here for the first time. That's okay. We had a crowd Sunday. Thank God we had a bunch of first-time folks Sunday. And I thank God for Easter Sunday. And they told me they were coming back, so we can expect to see them come back. Amen. So I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. And what we like to do, thank the choir, amen, for those beautiful renditions of song. Thank you, Marie and Caesar. They can just do it all. Thank you, choir. God bless y'all for showing up, for being here. You didn't have to show up, but you did. I thank God for you tonight. 
Amen. Thank God that we're getting ready for another Sunday morning where we can worship God together in spirit and in truth. Amen. But God is good. So we want to take just a moment, brother Caesar, and have a fellowship moment and say hey to one another. How you doing? God bless you. God keep you. Speak life into your neighbor. That's what we're going to do right before we take off with this short lesson tonight. Amen. It's okay. You can come out of your, come out from behind your pew. And... Oh, give thanks Speak life. unto the Lord, for he is good, as he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, as he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. filled with prayer and praise and worship. There's one thing we all need. If there's one thing the world needs, it's prayer. Amen. The Bible says man ought to always to pray and not faint. Amen. The hope ministry, the prayer ministry ought to be running over with people. It's, it's, it's something that we all should be doing. It's praying. And thanking God and honoring God and loving God. For God is a good God. Kind and wonderful. He's kept me from my earliest existence. Even up until right now, Brother Sorrell, God got me. Kept his hands on me. Kept me through dangers seen and unseen. Amen. Went through the fire, didn't get burned. Came through the flood, Sister Darwin, didn't drown. God is a good God. He's a promise keeper. We're studying from our pastor's book tonight. We're in a new book, church, and he members, we are in a new book tonight. Amen. It started on April 1st. Back to the table, the title of the new book. They're on sale here on Sundays. You can get them on Amazon. But pastor's going to be preaching and teaching from this, this book. Amen. You know, God got a great sense of humor. The last couple of books we started, I was standing behind this desk starting them for him, and he finished them in a mighty way. Because Easter Sunday was some kind of day here at church. Amen. I started to run a lap, but I would have run over somebody because the place was, was just overflowing with people. Amen. So after a little while, I did take a walk to the back, and I just walked along the back wall, you know, because I... Amen. I like to move like the Spirit did in the, in the beginning. The Bible says, and the Spirit moved. Whew. God is good. When God speaks, it makes you want to move. It makes me want to go somewhere, Brother Jordan. It makes me want to do something. I want to give God all the glory and all the praise. I was in the Bahamas there one year with Pastor with a young man, and he was doing a revival. 
And when the revival started doing the praise service, the guy took out a whole set of cymbals that a high school band and started banging the cymbals, giving God the glory. Somewhere he must have read, praise him even on the high sounding cymbals. You know what the church folk did? They put him out. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But that next night, Pastor told him, let that man come. If he want to bang his cymbals for God, let him come and bang his cymbals. Give God all the glory and all the praise. When God show up, you just do things that you just don't naturally do, Sister Doug. Because he's been so good. I don't know about you. Amen. When we look at the scripture tonight, I'm not going to keep you standing long. We're looking at Luke chapter 11, verse 37. And the Bible says, now when he had spoken, a Pharisee asked him to have lunch with him. And he went in. And reclined at the table, day four in the book, which is Thursday night tonight. You may be seated in the presence of God. We look at the text in the book of Luke, the apostle, Dr. Luke. He was a physician. Amen. And we thank God for the book of Luke. He say the vast majority of Jesus' ministry happened at the table. Amen. We talked about the table just a few weeks ago when he was in the upper room. He sent word and told a man that he was ready now to use the room that was upstairs. Go ahead on and set the table. When Jesus sat at the table, his disciples sat there with him. They all loved him. They loved him more than anything in the world. Peter and them gave up their fishing ministry and followed Jesus. Matthew gave up being a tax collector, followed Jesus. Luke gave up being a physician, and he followed Jesus. Judas, he knew how to handle money. He gave up what he was doing and followed Jesus. Yeah, Judas himself was a follower of Jesus, and they all were at the table. Amen. It is in the course of the meal that he teaches us over and over the lessons of life. In this gospel passage, Jesus wants to remind us that we are to treat others the way we want to be treated. I think that's the golden rule, isn't it? Amen. Amen. He accepts invitations from both the righteous and the sinner. For to him, all the brothers and sisters, he's teaching us tonight. He can Converse with people whose opinion he agrees and whose opinion he disagrees with. And that is something our divided world can learn from Jesus. Jesus' humility allows him to listen lovingly and accept others where they are. Amen. Amen. While at the same time, he encourages better behavior. Picture our Lord's engagement with whosoever he is dining. He's sitting at a table with a Pharisee. Church member. Somebody like myself or you but Dove said, the church members. He's sitting with us. Sitting down at the table with him, dining. Am I in such an attitude? Am I such an attentive listener? Or am I stuck in my own head thinking about what I am going to say next? I started to stop right there, but I'm going to move on through the book. I'll come back. Coming back to the table means more than just eating food. It's about receiving the other person into our hearts as we make ourselves humbly available to them. That, that, that word is, again, humbly. You know, the Bible teaches us something about humble. It said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. We, everybody in here got an ego. Amen. It's just the way we are. It's just the way we were built. It's just the way we are. We, we, that's why we wear some of the clothes we wear and the jewelry that we wear and do the things that the cars that we buy. We, 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 we got a sense of ego. We got a sense of want to be who we are. And, and sometimes we want to be better than we who we are. And we, and we have to watch those things. We have to be careful about those things because they are there. So we're looking at the text tonight. I just want to say the grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God will last forever. We need to consider God. 
that he is God. Amen. The Bible says he is the creator of everything that is created. That there's nothing that's created that God didn't create. God created everything. We need to get to realizing that and understanding that when we're in a society where atheism is, is, the, is the growing faster than spiritualism. And the Bible says there must be a bunch of fools because only a fool would say in his heart that there is no God. I thank God today that I'm not a fool. Anybody else besides me like that? I know that there's a God. Amen. Think about where he brought you from and where you are now. Just look back at what your parents had and see what you got now. Let, let you tell you what kind of God he is. He is a progressive God. He is an ever-evolving God. Not driving a Model A like my grandfather drove. Got you driving a Chevrolet or a Cadillac or Stingray. Or got some of them driving Bentleys and Mercedes Benz. God is just that kind of, consider God who he is. That he made us and he know all about it. He, he numbers the hairs on your head. He, he's a healer. When you call on him, he'll hear you. That's why you told him, say, call on me when I'm near. And I will hear. That means pray. You ever prayed and your prayer came through? I'm just going to give God a hand praise for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's an on-time God. We used to sing about that. You'd say, you might not come when you want him, but he comes when you want him. When you need him, he's right there, right on time because he knows what you need because he's God. He made you. He formed you in your mother's womb. He knew your end from the beginning. He knew where you were going to fall and when he was going to have to pick you back up again. That's the kind of God he is. Looking at the book, it said, back to the table. Back to the table, acceptance for others. You know, in, in, when I was a child, that, that's been quite a while ago. Amen. But we all grow. Amen. And thank God for growth. We, we're not going to be the same tomorrow that we are today. We're going to be another day older. We should be another day wiser. Amen. But when I was a child, we, we had to eat at the table. Mama didn't let nobody eat all over the house like that. You sit down at the table and the supper was going on that wasn't supposed to be going on. You heard about it at the table. And you kept the table clean. And, and, and not only did you keep the table clean, you, when you sit there, when you got through, you put your dishes up and somebody had a chore after we got through eating. To help with the dishes. That, that way children were learning what they had to do. To, the family was a tight-knit organization, man. We was a group. And then it didn't have much as we got now. Sometimes I had to wait for daddy to get home with the little bag so mama could get in the kitchen and put it together and then bring it to the table. Nobody going in the refrigerator getting something out, having it ready two or three hours before the time came. We didn't live that. Lived a little bit closer than that, but we were always at the table. Seems like every Sunday we'd meet at grandmama's house. My uncles would come over, my auntie would come over, everybody, even my old beer drinking uncle, he would come. We was all at, at grandma's house, but everybody was at the table. We were sitting down. Family knew who family was. If a child needed love, he had an auntie and an uncle that would throw his arms around him and give him some encouragement and give him some sound doctrine and put some wisdom in his head. We were all at the table. We've gotten away from the table. They came out with a little thing, Brother Dolph, they called a TV table. That's the first thing that was away from the table. Daddy coming out, getting his recliner, set the TV table in front of him. That was it. We ain't getting no more instruction from Daddy because he not at the TV table. Then next thing you know, everybody had a TV table because they start setting them in little pack little, little things of four. You get four of them. That tore the table up. That broke up the instructions. Kids stopped wanting to go to school. 
had to get a truant officer to follow them around to try to get them to school because they wasn't at the table no more. They, they wasn't getting instructions no more. Started lying and stealing and running off. We got away from the table. And we see it today, man. Young lady was telling me the other day, she said, I got baptized, but they made me get baptized. That's what they did at the table. They told you, next Sunday you're going down at all, and you're going to get baptized. Yes, ma'am. And you better walk down that aisle that next Sunday and tell them that I want to get baptized. I want to join church and get baptized. They had to straighten me out. They say, no, son, you want to get baptized, then you're going to join church. They gave you instructions. They told you how to handle it and what to do. You was going to catch up later on. And now today we see them say, I didn't know what I was doing when I got baptized. That's all right. You didn't need to know. Your mama knew what you was doing. You was giving your life to Jesus. You was, you was getting the Holy Spirit to rest upon you. It was in places where other people was going crazy and you came out sane. It was other places where people were getting beat and you made it back home not with a knot. It was other places where people were getting drunk and you got back home sober. Something was taking care of you. It's not that you wasn't there because you were there all the time. Oh, yeah, you were there. You up and down the streets. You was at the dance hall. Oh, you were at, you was at the club that night. That's right. You, you was in the fast car that time. You were there. You was out there shooting dice. You, you was out there passing the wine bottle. You was out there asking them to save me the shot. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about besides me? But God, but God, and the table was taking care of you and you didn't even know it. He's just that kind of God. And that's what the table did for you. Now, I know this lesson not going to get you sitting back at the table. But at least it ought to get you to thinking about what happened to you at the table that you start getting instruction. So that little fella you got at the house, give him some instruction. Give her some instruction. Give him some chest diving. Show him some love. Stop and tell him who Jesus is. Tell him what he did for him. Tell him that he showed up. Make sure you tell them that he is God. Let them know before they leave home. Because when they leave home, they're going to tell them there is no God. That's why the jails are filling up. They're not going to teach them the Ten Commandments out there on the streets. They're going to teach them what they taught me on the street, Bud Darby. It wasn't about no Bible either. Taught me how to cuss on the streets. One lady talking about, oh, yeah, honey, I know how to cuss. I, well, I've been doing how to cuss since I was about six or seven years old because I was out there on the park playing football, and they taught me how to cuss. The big boy was cussing, so I said what the big boy said. Didn't have to teach Peter how to cuss. He was on a fish pond. That's why he learned to cuss that. Some things they don't have to teach you. Pastor say you catch it, Brush Shack. Well, you pick it up right quick. I'm the only one who caught some stuff that I really didn't need, some stuff that I had to get rid of. Hey Amen. That's why we're here tonight. It's kind of like we're at the table tonight. Bible say, one guy said, oh, man, you ain't going to go to hell for cussing. But the Bible says, let not filthy communication come forth out of your mouth because it leads to greater ungodliness. That's what cussing will do for you. When you cuss them, they're going to cuss you back. You cuss them back, they cuss you back, and then today somebody's going to pull a gun. You're dead. Homicide running rampant in Beaumont. Not only Beaumont, but all over the nation. All the other nations of the world got to have a war for people to get killed on the streets. But in the United States, people are dying on the streets. In the neighborhood, gun violence is running rampant in the United States of America. And there ain't even a war going on. Love 
Lord, have mercy on us. I've been studying, I've been, I've been reading up on the abomination of desolation. That's times that we're living in even right now because we are living in perilous times. I know you was talking about the last days. No more. It's been the last days. It was the last days way before you was born or way before I was. It's been the last days since Jesus went back to heaven on that cloud taxi and told him to tarry you here and wait until the Holy Ghost has come. And when the Holy Ghost has come, you're going to receive power. Well, how do you get that Holy Ghost? Ask God for him. Get baptized. That's why the Bible said, believe and be baptized. Die to your old self. Come up out of the water, a new man, and the Holy Spirit will begin to lead you and guide you. Get you up on Sunday morning and tell you you're supposed to be at church today. Get you out of the casino wasting your money and tell you you don't need to waste it here. Get you out of the dope house and tell you you ought not be putting that in your body because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will not live in an unclean temple. That's what you need to tell the crackhead. Don't try to tell him he's a dirty, low-down crackhead. Tell him where the Holy Spirit won't live. Tell him he's giving all his power to foolishness. Get to the table. With your, set a table somewhere. That's what Jesus was doing. He was setting a table. He was teaching the lessons of life. And that's what we got to do. And here's one good lesson of life. Follow Jesus. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is God. Teach your children. Jesus is God. Trust me. Here's what you got to teach them, baby. Have faith in God because they're going to tell you, I can't see him, bad daddy. Children are smart. They're wise. They got this social media. They got this foolishness they're looking at on phone. Well, I can't. They got a lot of questions that we didn't have, but dog. Old folks used to tell us, just, just do what I told you to do and don't come back at me with nothing. We sit at the table. We, we, we was at the table. Come back with something at the table, you might get knocked away from the table. Wasn't no rebuttal at the table, baby. It was love at the table. Have faith in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I hope the child graduate. That's faith in God. I hope the child make it at school today. That's faith in God. I hope I get the job when I go fill out the application, pray, and God will make a way, put something on somebody's heart, and you'll get everything you ask God for. Because God got it. Everything belongs to God. It all belongs to God, but we need to stop, wait, and do like this Pharisee did tonight. We need to ask God to come to your table. Officer Mabro, he said, seek me and you're going to find me. Ask me and you're going to receive. The, the Pharisee tonight asked Jesus to come to his house and sit down at the table with him. They were getting ready to kill Jesus. That's why they, they were trying to cross Jesus up, but he was too smart for that. But you know what Jesus did? Went on anyway. They've got some folks you won't talk to because they got tattoos all over their body, nose rings in their nose. But that's the kind of people Jesus came here for. Like Brother Shagwa, the ones in jail, he, he in the prison and, and, and got his ministry in the prison talking to people who people don't hear. Oh, he's an ex-convict. That's what they used to say about him. But that's the kind of people Jesus came for. A Pharisee. One of the strictest, one of the strictest law keepers you could find. They kept the law, but they wasn't morally right. They had a problem with love. They had a problem with care. They had a problem. They sit on the front row in church. They had the tithes on. The Bible said they had rows on them, big old sleeves on them and cuffs and everything. Had the highest seat in the house. I almost got out of my chair Easter Sunday. 
I want to bring this up tonight because I saw a lady come in. She had three children, one on the hip, one, one holding her hand, and the other one was holding that one hand. And she walked up here to the front, and she couldn't find us. If I'd have been on that front seat, she would have had a seat. And good thing that Ursula came and got her and walked her to the back back there because I was just about to leave from here and give her a seat because she, she, she needed to be here even more than me. I want us to understand in the house tonight while we're at the table, be compassionate in this house. Made me think about my mama with three little babies. If she would have came in Sunday, they wouldn't have got up and let her sit and she needed more than they needed. Somebody else probably saw what I'm talking about, blood dog. But what I'm saying is we need to be paying attention. Our house is filling. God's house, God is sending them here. And that's why we got the lesson that's teaching us to love one another. That woman should have had a seat on the front seat with them three children. Oh, yeah, man. Y'all saw them Sunday, didn't you, Sister Darby? They were everywhere. That's why I got up and started walking around. I want to be seen sitting up here. I want to be seen back there with you. You might have a question for me. Amen. I noticed the deacons now after they come out to me and they say, okay, let's get, let's get out there and walk around amongst the people. That's a good way to do it. Give up them seats. Let them sit at the table so they can get what you got. God's been talking to you for 50 years. God's been talking to me for 70 some years. If I ain't got it now, I'm not going to get it. I'm going to tell you right now because I'm just about set in my ways. That's what they say about the old folks. And I'm glad the way that I'm set in is to love God, to keep his commandments, and to love those, my neighbors. I love myself. Y'all pay attention, babies. Help somebody. You don't just always have to be right there or right there or right there. You see him down here struggling. Get up. We, you know, when we used to have to ride the bus, I was a little boy. My mama sent me to pay the bill. She said, if, if a woman get on that bus and you're in the seat, you better not be in that seat when that bus take off. Am I right about that? And we need to get back to that. We need to be like Jesus. We, have, we need to have some compassion in our hearts. But man, brother, we need to love God enough to say, Brother Deacon, get up and let us sit down, baby. Come stand back here with me. Sister, let us sit right there. Put your, put your purse in your lap. There was compassion that I had for the soul. I thought I'd tell you about that. Put that in the gumbo. And remember the golden rule. Do unto others. Want somebody to be nice to you, be nice to them. If you want a friend, be friendly. Smile a little bit, shake your hand. Hey Amen. You don't, you don't have to go home with them. I mean, you don't have to buy them groceries. Just be kind-hearted. The, the Bible says be kind-hearted to one another. We Christians, we followers of Jesus. But a Christian is. Like we, we got to get back to the table. Remember the golden rule. Jesus can converse with people of high degree or low degree. Just last week, he was with a publican. Old Zacchaeus is a crook. Called Matthew. Matthew was a crook at first. He was getting that money. He was a tax collector. Everything that the government didn't get went in his pocket. He was with a publican last week. The publican changed his way. Say, God, Master, I'm going to go back and give him everything I took. I'm mean, matter of fact, I'm going to double it. Jesus was at the table. And tonight we see him at the table again with a Pharisee. It was a Pharisee that asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Wow, after Jesus talked with him. You know, after you get to know Jesus, you ought to have some questions for Jesus. Because he's got the answers. That's why he went to his house and sat at the table with him. He sat there with him lovingly. He sat there with him in a kind way. He listened. You know, we want to help people, but we always want to talk too much. They didn't come to hear about your past. They want you to hear about their past. They didn't come to hear about your Cadillac. They want you to hear about their Ford. 
If we could just sit, be quiet, and listen for a while, we'll help somebody. Because most of the time, folks will figure it out on their own if you would just listen. I had to learn to do that, but uh, we all have to learn to listen. Because like I said, we all, we all kind of got a little ego. I got, a, I got some information. Don't think I've just been running around a long time, don't have no information. Oh, I know how to do it. I know how to rock the house. I know how to put one on. I know how to ask for a dance. Oh, yeah. They got some young men who don't even know how to ask a young lady to dance. I know how to ask for a date. I know how to ask a woman, baby, will you marry me? And then she say, no, well, give me a few days. Can I call you? Can I call you sometime? Then you know why? Because I'm going to ask her again. God is good, man. Learn to listen. Learn to listen to the children while you're at the table. Did Gregory call these children today indigo children? I don't. Did Gregory say they they born with good sense? They born know how to use a computer. Just but they just about all. They sure know how to use the phone because that's the first thing you give them. But you don't want to watch them. You give them the phone so nobody won't have to watch them. Let them watch the phone. And then they watch TikTok, Facebook, and all that other stuff. Then they go to telling you stuff that you don't want to hear because TikTok is not censored. Facebook is not either. You can see anything and everything you want to see. That's why you know when you're talking to that little six-year-old, he know as much as you know. But when you're at the table with him, you got to listen. It's not like it used to be. It's changed some, bro, Booker. Give them an opportunity to talk because they're some wild little people and God give them that. They need that wisdom to get along, but at home, give them Jesus. Tell them what the first commandment said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your might, all your soul. And the Bible said, and love your neighbor as yourself. That means be kind to them. That don't mean you got to take them out just because you love them. You know, when we were children, love was one of them words. I thought that was your girlfriend, our little dog. Said, oh, I love you. Oh, he told her he loved you. <laughs> they thought we was dating. But when you love your neighbor as yourself, that means be kind to him. You know how our neighbor is? We used to have a commercial on conflict that said, the sun is our closest neighbor, and it's 93 million miles away. So what about the man that lives around the corner from you? That's your neighbor. What about the man in Houston? That's your neighbor. When you're in Houston, the people you meet, those are your neighbors. God created them all. We're all brothers and sisters. Those are the things that we, the people that's coming across the border now, they are, tell somebody, tell Governor Abbott, those are our neighbors. Tell President Trump, ex-President Trump, they are humans. Tell them women are humans. You got to love them. You got to be kind to them. You got to let them have a right in this place. Got to be kind hearted. We we need to get back to the table. Loving and kindness. And we got to be attentive. We got to be good listeners. So when I looked at this text tonight, I said, well, what is the text trying to tell me? The text is trying to tell me what Jesus did. Jesus, the Bible says in Luke 19 and 10, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you're okay, he didn't come for you. If you're all right, he didn't come for you. Abbott, if you good, he, he didn't come for you, but he, but he came for that old low-down sinner out there on the street. He came for the gambler at the gambling house. Came for the homeless man out there on crack. Came for the young lady who's out there that sexual traffic in the night. That's why when he met a woman at a well, he told her, go tell your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. She said, so said you said it right now. When you went, now it's not your husband. But I'm going to give you some living waters. Jesus stopped. He sat down and he listened to her. He heard her cry. When he got through listening, he wasn't talking that much. He met a woman who, who had been caught in adultery. He didn't say that much. 
All he did was ask him, where are those that accuse you? They're not here. And the Bible said, he wrote on the ground. He said, go and sin no more. Wow. Adultery is a terrible sin. It's one of the sins that will keep you out of heaven. That's why he came preaching, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. And it's not always adultery. Sometimes it's lying. Sometimes it's stealing. Sometimes it's lust. Sometimes it's hating. Sometimes it's not gathering yourself together as we are supposed to do. There are some of us tonight, even sitting here, that need to repent. I don't know about you, but I, I repented this morning, Brother Darby, because sometimes you sin knowingly and unknowingly. I don't want it to be me. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's why I'm always teaching you consider God because eternity is at hand. Amen. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what he came for. That's, that's why he went in the wilderness and was tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights and taught us a lesson in the wilderness because the devil will tempt you. And you have to have a word for him. If you be who you say you are, tell God to turn these stones to bread. And you need to tell him, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Who's missing that tonight? But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of... This is the, the Bible is the infallible word of God. It ain't nothing in the Bible but truth. There is not a lie in the Bible. You want to know the truth? You want to be free from whatever you caught up in. Study your Bible. I'm reading Isaiah. That's, what, that's where I'm at right now. I, I got a funeral to do tomorrow. I'm going to tell them all. He was bruised for our iniquity. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. You know why it's important? Because eternity at the next day. And he's already told us we all going to die. Amen. It is appointed what? Was for man. You ain't going to die but once. And after that, we're going to stand at the judgment seat of God. That's why eternity is so important. And when you stand at the judgment seat of God, there ain't no hell for them and a heaven for you. It's a heaven for all of us and it's a hell for all of us. So that's why I encourage you tonight. Get at the table. And that little rascal done told you a lie, tell him he needs to Repent. If he tell you, no, mama, I didn't do that, and you know he lied, say, boy, you need to get on your knees and tell God you're sorry. Because I know you're lying. And when you get through telling God you're sorry, I'm going to tie your behind up so you won't lie to me again. I don't know about y'all, but when I was sitting at the table, I used to get some promises like that from mom and them. Oh, I'm going to get you. Anybody besides me got a promise like that? Oh, I'm going to get you. We have to pay. We have to pay. But we all going to stand at the judgment seat of God. He came to seek. Came to save. That's which was lost. That's why I almost got choked up when I started because he seeked me out. He pulled me out of darkness. And Brother Darby, I don't know about you, but he brought me into a marvelous light. It's a little suffering every now and then, but suffering make you strong. It ain't all peaches and cream all the time, but it can be. If we would just do some of the things that God told us to do. I told her later today, she was telling me something about what happened last week and yesterday. I said, baby, didn't the Bible tell you forget those things that are? We at the table. That, that's what messes a lot of us up, Brother Jordan. We want to go back to what happened just a while ago. What happened this morning? Forget about that little fuss you had this morning. And the Bible says, press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I imagine that's what Jesus is telling this Pharisee tonight. Forget about what you heard. I am he who you were looking for. I am the Messiah. That's why I came through the cornfield on the Sabbath day eating corn because I am the Sabbath. That's why they wanted to kill him, because he was eating corn on the Sabbath day. 
That's why they wanted to kill him because he healed a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath day. The man was lost. The man needed his hand to work. The man needed his hand to make a living for his family. And Jesus knew the man needed his hand whether he healed him on a Saturday, on a Sunday, or Monday. The man needed his hand. So God told him to stretch forth your hand. And the Pharisees ran with that. Oh, he's healing on the Sabbath day. And that's why this Pharisee told Jesus, come to my house and eat this evening. Why did you heal the man on the Sabbath? He, Jesus probably told him, because I am the Sabbath. I'm the walking Sabbath. If you had an ox that was stuck in the mud today, would you leave him stuck in the mud or would you pull his rain and get him out? They couldn't answer. They went away sad. Yeah, Jesus sat at the table. He sat at the table with some desirables and he sat at the table with some undesirables because they needed what? Another thing that left this teaching, we need healing. We all need a healing because we all sick. The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all got some ailments and we need healing and we need to know what to do. While Jesus was sitting at the table in the book of James, he told us if any of you among you are sick, let them sit for the elders of the church. Oh my God, have mercy. That's what he told us while he was sitting there. And you know what? They don't want to do that now. Let them send for the elders of the church and the elders are going to come, bro, Cavalier. They're going to anoint them with oil. What am I saying? They call it slapping oil. I don't care what they call it. If the Bible says anoint them with oil, I'm going to have my vial of oil and I'm going to anoint them in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says pray the prayer of faith. Amen. You know, some of us need to learn what we got to do. We need to learn to be obedient to the word. The word is Jesus. The word is God. The Bible tells us that in the beginning was the word. Dwelt among us. Go and put all on. I, I know it's people with all. That's the lady the other day. I, the, the spirit told me to pray for. I didn't have all. I said, I said, Lord, I ain't got my all. He said, Jesus didn't have no all either. He said, go do what I told you to do. Lay your hands on them. Believe for her. Didn't four men believe for the man on the couch that they let down in the roof? He wasn't believing, but the Bible said because of your faith. Who do I say? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Have faith in God. Trust God while you're at the table. He came for our healing. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And do what things that God told you to do according to his word. In order to know what his word says, you got to study his word. You, you got to know his word. You got, to, you got to open your book at home. It's okay if you get sleepy studying it. If you can't do but two chapters, do two chapters and go to sleep. Read the book of Isaiah. Study the book of Psalms. Read it where it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Read it where it says, the Lord is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in a time of trouble. If you get tired after reading that, close the book, go get in the bed and go to sleep. And when you get up again, get another time. Get in that book and read the Bible. Read the Bible every day. Read it when you feel like reading it. Read it when you don't feel like reading it. When you're sitting down and don't have nothing to do, keep a Bible to you because this word is God. He came to seek to save that which was lost. The Bible says he was on his way to Jerusalem. Amen. And the disciples asked him, said, Jesus, do you have any meat? And he said, my meat is due to the, do the will of him who sent me. He told us, y'all, our work is to believe. We think our work is to go out there and do all the things that we're doing. Our work is to believe in God. Jesus said, believe in him who sent me. Sent me for what? Not, not to heal the sick. He didn't send him to sit with that Pharisee, but the Bible in the beginning said, and it came to pass as he was on his way to Jerusalem, ultimately to die on the cross. You ought to be like some of us. You ought to be like me. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. He is tramping out the benches where the grapes have wrapped the stone. I don't know about you, but I will forever sing glory, glory, hallelujah. The Lord lifted me. I don't know about you, but I was sinking deep in sin. 
I thought they was teaching me how to smoke and they were teaching me how to cuss. They were teaching me how to roll a joint. They were teaching me how to take a bump. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. He heard the cry of my mother who sat at the table with me. He heard the counsel of my father who sat at the table with me and told me, baby, don't do that. But I went out there and did it anyway. But from the waters, he lifted me, picked me up and he turned me around and he planted my feet in Antioch on solid ground. I don't know about you, but it was love. It was love that lifted me. And if he lifted me, he'll lift you too. Read the book. Get the book. It's your lesson. Accept your neighbor's baby. Be kind to them. You got more than enough and they hungry, feed them. Amen. You got more clothes than what you need and they naked, give them some clothes. Amen. Do what Jesus did. Amen. Just be kind-hearted one to another. Especially in the house of God. Man, we got to love one another here. When they came Sunday, they, they, they came to see how we was acting. Oh, Pastor gave, them, Pastor gave them a good message. It was awesome, man. It was wonderful. Anytime you preach Jesus and him coming to save a rich like us, to save a nation like America, to look in on Israel and Jerusalem, there's a reason. There's a reason for the season. Anybody need Jesus? It's time to consider him, baby. You're getting ready to go through another summer. Last summer, I can remember almost some 30-something days in 115 degrees. It killed some people. They didn't have Jesus. They're going to perish. They're going straight to hell. They're killing people out there on the streets. If they don't know Jesus... It ain't no gangster heaven and gangster hell. There's a prepared place for a prepared people. I wish they could hear this all over the nation. Accept Jesus tonight as your Lord and Savior. He came to seek and save you, the lost. The beggar died. And he went to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man died and opened his eyes in hell, not because he was rich, because he didn't do what God told him to do. Told Lazarus, he says, hide over here, it's unbearable. Bring me a drop of water. The beggar said, I can't come over there. There's a great gulf between us. I can't get to you tonight. Man realized he was in hell when he was going to be in hell, because one thing about hell, you don't want to go there because hell is eternal. And it's unbearable. And it's miserable. And when this spirit leaves the body, it's going back to be somewhere. God didn't put a spirit in you just for it to lay in the grave. It's going back to be with God. And when we all come back, we're going to put a body with this spirit. It's going to be a sanctified body. But we're going back to be with God. That's why they said we're all going to stand at the judgment seat of God to give and count of what we did in these bodies. Did you pray for the sick? Did you visit the jail when I was in jail? Did you feed me when you saw me standing on the corner with a sign saying I was hungry? Did you feed me when you knew I needed something to eat? Did you love me like you were supposed to love me? When did we do that, Jesus? So when you've done it to the least, I thank God we got a feeding ministry here in Antioch. They feeding some people on, on Sundays and stay. They did. I thank God for doing what we're doing at this body of Christ. He says, as often as you do it to the least of these, my little ones, man, forget about yourself. 
Forget about yourself every now and then. Help somebody. You don't have to help them every day, but every now and then. Do some good for somebody. Jesus came to save a wretch like me. Put the QR code up, whoever's in there. Somebody might want to flash the QR code and give their life to Jesus tonight. We at the table. I know you don't see a table, but when we come together like this, we at the table, Bless Grandpa. Jesus told us, greater works than I've done that you would do. So here's what we ought to be doing. We ought to be seeking to save, seek and save that which is lost. Some of them in my family. That's why when I meet my family, I'm, I always tell them I, I'm so happy to be the one in this house that represents God. Because I ain't scared to tell you that God is real. He loves you no matter what situation or shape you in. God loves you. So be conscious of what we're doing in the Lord's house. Be kind, baby. They're coming. The weather fitting to get pretty, the house going to fill up. And what we got to do is show love and compassion. And when you see these single mamas, Coming in with three or four children, that's where your compassion ought to be. It's just like on a bus. If you got a seat, get up and give her your seat and go get somewhere and stand up. Let them be comfortable in this house. Do what you can. Do it for God. Do it for Jesus. Oh, I'm watching and I'm praying. I thank God that Sunday that Russia found that, that child a seat with them three children. It was over there near the back somewhere. When he put her in, they moved around, but she was able to get all three of her babies in church. That meant something to her. She didn't have to go get back in her car and leave and not get the word. Just because somebody showed compassion, she'll probably come back. And if she don't need it, I know them three babies need it because the Bible said we was born in sin and we was shaped in iniquity. We was little hellions. That's what we were. Till we found Jesus. Don't look at me like you didn't raise no hell. Much hell as I raised and I know I wasn't that bad. If I raised hell, we all had little hell time going on. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the blood that was shed on Calvary's hill. Thank God for the nails in his hands and in his feet. Thank God for Easter Sunday morning when he got up with all power in heaven and earth. He paid a debt that I owed that I could not pay. Thank you, Jesus. And the song says, Jesus paid it all. Click the QR code. Join church. Be baptized. Start learning about God. Click the QR code. Because Jesus paid it all, all of him we owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. But thank God for the saints tonight, amen? He washed it, baby. And if he washed mine, he'll wash yours. He washed it white as snow, amen? Now, I got a home. I got a home on the other side, amen? I'm on my way. I know I got a home on the other side ever with the Lord. Let's give God a hand of praise tonight. I'm done with that. Not going to say anything else. Next week our pastor will be back. Amen. It's time for us to give. That's the way we worship God. You know, after Easter passed, it looked like I was starting a whole nother year, Brother Cavalier. It seemed like it just everything is fresh and new. It's like it's a beginning again already. And I'm striving to do what God would have me to do according to his word. And the word said when we come to his house, we ought to bring an offering. Didn't they teach you to bring an offering, sister daughter? Mama, give me about a quarter. And she said, that better be in that bucket when they pass it around. Don't go buy no ice cream cone. When I get to church, I'll give you money for ice cream cone. Put that in Sunday school. You know why? She had read somewhere where Jesus said, Give. Made us a promise. See, if, I, I don't know about you, but I, I need the windows of heaven open for me. 
I'm standing in need of a blessing every day of my life. Not because I'm greedy, but careful, but because I need it. And God had told me, he was promised me he'd supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory. I'm just giving you time to get your offering out. Put it in the envelope. If you don't have enough to put it in the envelope, that's okay. Just put it in the bucket. And when you come to the house, baby, always have a gift. It's a quarter. That's cool. Dime, 50 cent, dollar, five dollars. God going to bless you. After a while, you baby give a hundred dollars. He done bless some of them, they give five hundred dollars. He blessed one man, that man gave a million dollars. Lord help us. He can do it. Lord, we thank you for the money that you put in our hands. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for blessing us, God, letting us know that you came for the sinners and those that are saved alike. You came here to seek, save that which was lost, to supply all our needs, to heal the sick, to pay your taxes. He did it. Thank you, God, for this money. We give it now, God, according to your word. Receive it. Bless us now, God, is my prayer. Restore 30, 60, 90, even 100 fold. Because, Lord, we need you like we never needed you before. My prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. Give on our way out. Let's stand for our benediction, brothers. Let me bless you tonight. God's good to us, and he's going to continue to be good to us. Study the word. Just open your Bible and study. Read the book of Isaiah. Start with Isaiah. Read Romans. Read the book of Romans. Study the book of Romans. Read the small book. Read the book of James and First and Second Peter. Then go back and get you some history. But get started with a small book and see how good God is. And Colossians will tell you Jesus is God. And now, beloved, the Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord make it his face to shine on thee and give thee peace. If you agree with that, let us say amen. Go in peace.